When I was a kid, I loved grab bags. There was something so mysterious, so intriguing about a sealed bag, normally of the paper variety, that had just a price and no inclination of the goods inside. Sometimes it was amazing. Toys that you never knew you could have, never knew you wanted. And other times... It was a big rubber snake again that only your little brother would even consider playing with. The mystery was most of the fun, though. The toys were merely the icing on the suspenseful cake. In the old days of design kits, this was kind of the case, too. You knew there was going to be at least one toy, or development board in this case, but the rest was kind of a mystery. Maybe some cables, maybe some software, possibly some IP, but you can never be quite sure. Today's design kits are a whole nother bag, however. The best kits today need to be more robust, include soft goods, reference designs, and even market-specific IP. When they do, when you don't have to guess the contents of the kit or supplement the kit with a whole bunch of other stuff from other sources, the prototyping phase of your design may just go a whole lot easier. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, and in today's Chalk Talk, I'm going to chat with Evan Leal of Xilinx about their new Kintec 7 KC705 evaluation kit, all the cool stuff that's included, and how we can use it to speed up our FPGA prototyping. Before we get started, I want to remind everyone that you can click on that Download Now button below your player. There you can download a free product brief that further expands on this topic. Thank you so much for joining me today, Evan. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So we're going to be talking about Kintex Valuation Kits today. Tell us what we're going to be learning. Well, we have three main learning objectives for today. First, we're going to understand what makes up an evaluation kit so you know in which areas you can rely on your vendor. Second, we're going to learn why it's important to use evaluation kits for prototyping. And third, we're going to learn about the wealth of resources available to help you prototype for your FPGA. Great. So we're talking about evaluation kits here. What's in one? Good question. The historic view of evaluation kit is to supply a board, add cables, put it in a box, and be done. Right. Today's need, however, is much greater. You need a board, plus IP, plus software, plus reference designs, plus more. Mm -hmm. It's far more than a board in a box. In fact, FPGA evaluation kits need to offer substantial soft content today to help designers accelerate through their design cycles. So there are a lot of different kinds of kits, evaluation kits, design kits. Can you expand a little bit on what we need in our evaluation kits today? Sure. At their core, targeted design platforms are the next generation of evaluation kits, which include all the infrastructure a designer will need to create innovative and differentiated products. An infrastructure here means hardware, design tools, IP, and reference designs, which are all pre-verified, not just standalone, but also working together. Mm -hmm. These platforms are already a huge leap from the board-in-a-box systems of the past, and these days, for an evaluation kit to be useful, they must include all these essential components. But today's designers require even more specialized content, including kits targeted to domains, which are major areas of technology that are used in many end markets, including embedded processors, mm -hmm. DSP, connectivity interfaces like PCI Express, analog, and video. Mm -hmm. These types of kits often include daughter cards as well as specific tools and IP appropriate for the domain. Domain kits provide designers in these domains a significant jumpstart in their areas of development, but there are prototyping vehicles even more tailored to specific markets. For example, communication designers may be interested in a packet processing or traffic manager kit, while industrial engineers may be able to get a huge jump on their prototyping with a motor control kit. Mm -hmm. Today's market forces require design engineers to move as quickly through prototyping as possible, and the good news is that prototyping platforms today, when done right, offer amazing amounts of content, including specific subsystems, so designers can focus on providing innovative applications instead of spending time on things that vendors should be providing. Mm -hmm. So the challenge for designers is to choose the right FPGA and evaluation kit to suit their design goals. Careful attention needs to be paid to the soft content and other materials shipped with the evaluation kits to ensure you get everything you need to accelerate through prototyping. So you mentioned we're going to talk about the prototyping flow. Tell us what you mean by that. Sure. Not all designers move from the back of the napkin to an end system in the same way. Mm -hmm. Some use very little vendor IP and hardware, while some use full evaluation kits and subsystems. True. 
For those designers who go it alone, they take all the burden of fitting together the many puzzle pieces that will make up their end system. And this typically results in large amount of time needed to bring up and debug hardware, IP, and application software all simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So why spend time here when the vendors already have pre-verified common IP like Ethernet, PCI Express, and external memories? The goal for designers should be to focus on their end applications and systems since any good modern evaluation kit will not only have all these pre-verified bits of IP, but also have verified subsystems with elements like these already operating together. The value is that these are known good systems, which include rigorously tested hardware, verified IP cores and reference designs, as well as the more complex targeted reference designs like the full PCIe DDR3 subsystem, for example. When designers leverage these kits, they're able to reuse significant amounts of content so they can more easily focus on designing their end applications. We're talking about Kintex FPGAs today, right? Those are mid-range FPGAs. Mid-range FPGAs are kind of like the middle child. Sometimes they're a bit misunderstood. Help us understand mid-range FPGAs. Mid-range FPGAs offer significant performance capabilities while maintaining low cost and low power. This class of FPGAs has a wide end market appeal. So that includes communications, automotive, aerospace and defense, consumer, mm -hmm industrial, scientific, medical, and, and others. The prototyping needs for the mid-range FPGA aren't so sufficiently different from the low end or the high end. They require a flexible evaluation platform to accommodate varied needs, and they must enable customers to evaluate power, performance, and common features like external memory, PCI Express, and more. Okay, I want to get going. I've got my credit card, and bam, I've got a kit. What's in the box? So for the Kintex 7 FPGA KC705 evaluation kit, that's our base Kintex development platform. Okay. And as mentioned before, designers need a lot more than just the board in the box to move through pro meet their time to market goals. As a base kit, the KC705 is suitable across end markets and the contents of the kit are a great example of what designers need from the vendor to be successful. So this includes the KC705 evaluation board. Okay. And an AMS evaluation card, two pieces of hardware we'll talk more about later. It includes design software and abundant reference and example designs and demos. It includes board design files, which are very important so that people can use that to get a jump start on their board design. Mm -hmm. It includes documentation, and then the obvious stuff like cables and power supply, as well as a USB flash drive, which has all the soft content loaded on it. Obviously, the coolest thing in the box is the board. Tell us more details about what's on the board. Yeah, the hardware is only one part of what a good evaluation kit should be, but it's a foundational and fundamental part. True. The KC705 baseboard contains a broad set of features with abundant I.O., including two FMCs, one high pin count and one low pin count. It also includes user SMA so that you can route out transceiver channels. Okay. It has an SD card interface, user LEDs, power switch, dip switches, programming, push buttons, character display, all of the common stuff you need for basic prototyping. Additionally, it contains a DDR3 SO DIMM, and it features the Kintec 7 325-2 FPGA. It also contains a PCIe connector, which enables you to plug it into a chassis for additional prototyping beyond just the on-desk prototyping. We've got a wealth of other features, but the last couple I'd like to point out are the SFP cage, which allows you to do some line-side testing, as well as the XADC header, which uh, enables AMS evaluation. Great. So I've heard Xilinx has analog built onto the FPGA. Tell us more about that. That's right. All the members of the 7-series FPGAs feature Agile Mixed Signal or AMS technology. This includes a 1 mega sample per second 12-bit analog to digital converter built into the FPGA for everything from simple control and sequencing to more signal processing intensive tasks like linearization, calibration, oversampling, and filtering. Mm -hmm. This helps you reduce bomb costs by allowing you to replace discrete ADCs or more complex signal processing devices that you would otherwise have to design on your board. Great. So what I'm showing here is the AMS daughter card, which we ship with all the 7 Series base kits, such as the KC705 and the VC707, to help you evaluate this analog feature of the FPGA. This AMS card plugs in the XADC header, which I just showed you on the previous foil, and allows you to monitor signal-to-noise ratio by either using the convenient onboard signal source generator or using the leads to drive external analog signals. In addition to the AMS card, Xilinx also provides an evaluation GUI so that you don't need to create the HDL or other soft content and you can get this working right out of the box. Very nice. 
Between the FPGA analog feature, the AMS daughter card, and the software GUI for evaluation, we're providing a powerful means to evaluate AMS so you can ultimately take advantage of this FPGA feature and reduce your bomb cost. So, Evan, you've talked a lot about soft content that goes along with the kit. Give us some more details about that. We have mainly three categories of soft content that I'll break it down into, but the goal for all of these is to skip the monotonous work and make sure that you focus on your end applications. Great. So first off, we provide software including ISC Design Suite Logic Edition. We also provide the Fedora 16 operating system, which is important for the base targeted reference design. The base targeted reference design includes a PCI DDR3 interface, amongst other things, and we'll talk about that momentarily. In addition, we have reference designs including a BIS design, which helps you get all the main features of the board operating quickly out of the box. Great. We have an IBERT transceiver test design, which helps you do the same thing for transceivers. Mm -hmm. We have an ISC Ethernet design, meaning you can grab that right out of ISC and get running with that on the KC705. And we also have things like a DDR3 design, a PCIe design, as well as a multi-boot and an AMS reference design. As far as documentation goes, we've got the Getting Started Guide, which is a printed guide that we have available in the box to get you moving quickly. Mm -hmm. We have the Hardware User's Guide, Reference Design, and Example Design User Guide, as well as schematics and PCB files, which we've talked about previously. Great. So a lot of people overlook the value of a reference design that comes with the kit. But in this case, the reference design is pretty valuable for us to get started with the kit. Is that right? Absolutely. So what you see here is the out-of-the-box targeted reference design, or TRD, for the KC705. Nice. This is actually a subsystem design including multiple IP cores as well as application-level software and drivers, all of which are verified on hardware. This TRD provides significant acceleration through the design cycle for a number of reasons, but designers will take note of the following three most compelling ones. Number one, it features the most common connectivity and memory IP, namely PCI Express and DDR3, meaning this design will have relevance for a vast number of designers. Great. Number two, it provides source code HDL and the software drivers, which designers can use in their end systems to dramatically reduce their design time. And number three, it's available now. The base TRD was released at the same time as the Kintec 70 as silicon, meaning designers can start today. Fantastic. So providing this entire PCIe DDR3 subsystem, including both the HDL and software stack, Xilinx has removed an enormous amount of tedious work. This is exactly what designers need in evaluation kits, what they should demand from their vendors, and what Xilinx offers. Okay, I'm ready to get started. Where do I go for more information? Sure. There's three basic places you should go check out today. First is you can go download software if you don't have it already, or if you need the latest version, go to xilinx.com slash isc. Secondly, all the docs and designs that we've talked about here aren't only available in the kit. You can get them off the web, and you can get started before you even get the kit at xilinx.com slash support slash documentation. Nice. And finally, you want to get more info on the kit itself, uh, you'll want to go to www.xilinx.com slash kc705. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Evan. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. And before we go, don't forget to click that Download Now button below the player to download a free product brief that further expands on this topic. For Chalk Talk, I'm Amelia Dalton. For more Chalk Talks, check out the On Demand section of eejournal.com. <laughs>